and he joins us now. Thank you very much for your time today, uh, Dave Prentice. Um, well, we don't know the full detail of what the Chancellor is going to announce in the spending review next week yet, do we? But you are being very clear that you think all public sector workers should get a pay rise. I've got no doubt whatsoever. The, um, the statement this morning and the, um, the policy unit behind it, that what they're saying, a uh, pay freeze for public service workers, it's like going back to the days of austerity, the last decade, where it's public service workers who paid the price, pay freezes, 700,000 jobs lost, which made it much harder to deal with the pandemic uh, when it came. It is a kick in the teeth. For all of those public service workers who have been on the front line, who have been in our hospitals, who have been in our local authorities, looking after the homeless, daycare workers, a myriad of people, care workers on the minimum wage, many of them giving their lives to look after our communities. And it's their courage, it's their dedication, which is bringing us through this pandemic. According... Uh, sorry to interrupt. According, according to the reports we're seeing, though, the Chancellor is seeking to recognise NHS frontline workers. Um, I mean, do, do you accept that differentiation between NHS frontline workers and other public sector workers, given the level of public debt that there is at the minute? Yes, we're in the um, we, we are the largest health union. And it's more than doctors, it's more than nurses, it's cleaners, it's porters, it's all those people who do all the jobs that make the, um, the health team. It's the first responders, it's the ambulance workers, the paramedics who have done so much. Are they included in what is being said now? Because I don't think so. But it's beyond that, it's the care workers, the Cinderella's who have paid the price with their lives and seen people that they care for die because they've been neglected. And all of that has been going on, is still going on. And now, uh, during the middle of the pandemic, we then give them the body blow that you're going to have a pay freeze for three years. These are some of the lowest paid workers in this country. They have given so much. We have clapped them on a Thursday night. And yet, at the end of it, what we're doing, we're saying we're going back to the old normal. Well, we're not going back to the old normal. We're not going back to public service workers being undervalued. They're not we're not going back to seeing them underpaid and overworked. Our, our public service workers are absolutely exhausted. And it's been their dedication, it's been their courage that is keeping the rest of us alive. And uh, to and treat them heard. like this, I think this is absolutely immoral. And we've heard about that exhaustion, the impact on physical and mental health from so many mm. health workers, uh, other frontline workers. Uh, if you had to make the economic case for not putting yes. a, a pay freeze on all of those public sector workers, how would you do that? Because perhaps that is what the Chancellor will listen to. Public services mean that we have healthy communities. They, um, they mean that people can go to work that we've dealt with the, the pandemic, to help us get the economy going again. Public service workers spend their money in their local communities. Over 80% of the wage of a public service worker goes into the local communities, into the local shops that are closed. We need to grow the economy, but we also need to deal with the taxation system. We have so many people in this country, the rich avoiding taxation. We've got people evading taxation. We've got big multinational companies taking their money out of the country when they should be playing their part and helping the economy to um, grow and help us to get the public service workers in those areas where we need them. Just because there's a virus possibly in the spring or, the, um, or even throughout next year, it means we're living with this pandemic for that period of time, at least, at least. And then to the body blow of having gone through that, they're fearing for themselves. They fear when they're going to their own homes. When they open their door after being with COVID patients, they fear they're going to pass it on to their families. And at the end of all of that, we kick them in the teeth and say, you're not going to have a pay increase for three years. Care workers on the minimum wage and to do work in two or three different care homes just to get a living wage. And they're going to be treated no further increases. Because Dave. if you do it for the pay review body, you do it for all public service workers.
Dave Prentice, we must leave it there, but thank you very much for your thoughts today. Dave Prentice, General Secretary of the UK's biggest trade union, uh, Unison. And uh, just to be absolutely clear, this uh, public sector pay story that we're talking about applies to England only.